so that we may you know, welcome the Lord into our heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, I will announce a few things. You may see the announcement on the back of the bulletin. The first one, May 5th, the Sunday, we will celebrate the baptism and the confirmation. And uh, after service, the punch and the cake will be served. So the, uh, please join the fellowship and the service. And then um, our church lay leaders have invited you to the join them in the special time of prayer. So, so every Sunday, in the 10.50, and uh, everybody wants to uh, join the prayer, uh, please come forward in the altar lay, and then kneel down, and then pray together. And um, Mission River District is hosting annual conference 2024 at the Hampton Convention Center. So from June 20 to 22nd. So they are looking for volunteers to help with registration, ushers, and folk part. So if you are interested, please contact the church office.
Please stand if you are able and please join me for call to worship. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. <clears throat> when we look at the sky, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars you have set in place, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and seek wisdom, who have faith and strive for understanding. Amen. Remain standing and we sing together hymn number 144. This is my Father's word. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we gather together, we seek your wisdom and guidance. Guide us in your truth and help us to be transformed by your grace and love. Lord, we are overwhelmed by your handiwork in creation and we see your existence through them. Lord, help us to trust you, and we ask for the Holy Spirit as we gather together and pour out your Spirit upon us in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, confess our faith together by saying the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and he descended into, he descended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Say something about that um, the Warren Holloway. Um, the, he he has the 90th birthday yesterday, so that we just recognize him. So his birthday, so you can send a card to him. You know, so whatever you can celebrate his birthday.
Amen. Let us take a time uh, to uh, share the peace of Christ with one another. So you move around and then you may say, the peace be with you. So, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Harriet. So, Anthem, you sing that. It's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call.
see prophecies fulfilled. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Psalm 19, 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. Mark 9, 22 to 24. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me to overcome my disbelief. This is the word of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you to hear your word. Speak to us, and we will listen. We will follow your guidance in all we do. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock, 
my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, over the next four weeks, we will embark on a journey together to explore some of the most the profound question of our faith. I will include the insights from Adam Hamilton's book, The Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. Uh, but this sermon series is primarily based on my personal experiences. My goal is to demonstrate how our doubts can actually lead us to deeper and more resilient faith. So, as a child, I grew up in South Korea, and I was taught to believe in God without any questions, any doubts. To doubt God or the Bible was seen as a, a lack of a faith. However, as a, I matured, I realized that questions and doubts are part of the journey of faith. They are natural for growth and lead us to a deeper understanding of our belief. I want to share the survey. Yeah, that's one. The survey posed the question, have you ever experienced a time of a spiritual doubt when you questioned your beliefs about your religion or God? So 26% people said they uh, still had a doubt. And 40% people said they had resolved their doubt. It showed that two-thirds of Christians have faced doubt at some point. And you can see the 35% said they never doubted. If you have never doubted God, that's great. But if you have struggled with doubt, you should not feel ashamed because it's a common experience shared by many. And I, I want to share the another one. The, the survey also found that 53% people felt their period of doubt made their faith stronger. And only 7% said doubt made their faith weaker. And 12% said they lost their faith because of their doubt. I think doubt is just uh, the other side of a coin, the same coin as is faith. For most Christians, facing doubt has uh, helped their faith to grow. Think about Abraham. He is known as the father of faith, who himself struggled with faith, uh, doubt. When he remained the childless, he doubted God's promise. At that time, God took Abraham the outside and showed him the sky asking him to count the stars. Of course, it was impossible to count them. Then God promised him as many descendants as the stars in the sky. Let me ask you this question. Have any of you felt like Abraham, wondering when God's promises would come true? The Bible states that after that event, Abraham trusted God. And this trust was created to him as righteousness. Doubt is not only present in religious matters, but also in every aspect of life. For example, the night before I married my wife, Hannah, I was 90% sure it was the right decision. <laughs> Yet, there was still 10% of me wondering about my decision. I think many of you can relate it. When choosing your spouse, 
How many of you were 100% sure this person was perfect for me, for you? Raise your hand. <laughs> If you are, you know, you are blessed. Most people are not completely sure, but they move forward with faith in their decisions. Just as Abraham's story shows that doubt can coexist with faith. Similarly, when you make any significant choice, you might not be completely sure it will guarantee a happy life. But you go ahead and take the leap, moving forward with a bit of doubt, trusting that the path ahead will unfold as it should. I have prepared this sermon series because many Christians have questions about God and our faith. Over the next four weeks, we will discuss four key questions. Does God really exist? Is the Bible true? And why are prayers sometimes unanswered? And why do the innocent suffer? suffer. I pray that by addressing these questions, our faith will grow and become stronger. Today we will seek the, the answer to the question, does God really exist? I will present three reasons why we believe in the God's existence. So first, When we look at the universe, we are amazed by majesty and beauty of creation. I once spoke with a college student who occasionally come to church. He expressed skepticism about God creating the world. He said the Big Bang theory was more convincing. According to the Big Bang theory, the universe began about 13.8 billion years ago from a primeval, primeval atom, which is, uh, ex uh, exploded and gave rise to space and time. So, in short, the universe the started with the tiny atom and uh, exploded. This makes me wonder what sparked this uh, complex uh, process. It seems to have uh, required something or someone to have ignited it and set it into motion. I believe that someone is God, as I see God's handiwork in creation. Let me use uh, analyze to help il illustrate this point. So Jane, Jane is here, yeah. Uh, she's a member of our church, and she is known for her delicious cakes. And when we sold the baked goods at church events, her cake was the first to sell. Last year, uh, the November, uh, at the pastor, the appreciation month, And she made a cake for me. So you remember that? <laughs> yeah. It took, it took it home. And my children asked, who made it? Imagine if I had told them, no one made it. It just appeared. <laughs> Maybe the children would say, that is ridiculous. Come on, Dad. Who made this? They would never believe this. Similarly, I find it ha hard to believe the universe with all its complexity could come about without the creator. Just as a cake needs a baker, the universe needs a creator. And I believe that creator is God. As a Christian, we believe that God created this world. The book of Genesis tells us two creation narratives 
that convey profound truth about our world's origins, not through scientific explanation, but through theological insight. The first one is Genesis 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 3. And the second, the creation account is the Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through chapter 3, verse 24. Genesis chapter 1 describes God creating the world by speaking things into existence. So you may see the format in the, on the screen. The God said, let there be light. So there was light. And God saw it. It was good. The next day, God said, let there be space between the water. And God called that sky. And God saw it. It was good. That's the, the pattern in the Genesis 1. And then the next day, God said, let there be something. And then that is existed. The one sixth day, God made human beings in his image. This is a creation as we know it. But the second account is Genesis chapter 2. This creation story offers a different order. The focusing on the intimate creation humans and the response to humans' needs. In the beginning, the God created the first human, Adam, from the dust of the ground. And then God created the plants, then the other animals. So different order from the Genesis 1. And finally, God made a woman from the man's rib. And for he declared, it is not good for the man to be alone. These two accounts of creation have different orders and even use the different name for God. So the Genesis 1, the author used the name the God, while in Genesis 2, the name the Lord God is used. And additionally, these accounts are beautiful, powerful, and meaningful. Also, they teach us fundamental truth about who created the world and why it was created. If you read these two accounts as a literal the science, you would miss their true purpose. When we approach these stories as a scientific account, you encounter a conflict between science and faith. Instead, we should read them as a testimonies to God's power and love, which invites us to live responsibly within his creation. In short, these accounts focus more on the why and who of creation rather than the how the world was uh, created. I would like to show you the image of a Milky Way galaxy so you can see the Milky Way galaxy on the screen. You can see the circle. That is, the, our planet is there. The Milky Way galaxy is one of as few as 100 billion and as many as 2 trillion galaxies. That's huge. We can count it. We cannot count it that. Through science, we can appreciate the vastness of the universe and honor God. This reminds me of the word of a psalmist we led today. The Psalm 8, the verse 3 and 4. When I look up at your sky, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place. What are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? Indeed, every time I see the sky and trees and stars and the sea, 
I feel God's majesty and God's power. I believe you are the same. I visited the Grand Canyon in 2015 with my parents. And that's the uh, picture I took in, uh, when I visited in 2015. Once I saw the Grand Canyon, I was uh, overwhelmed by its majesty, which seems to declare God's glory. Psalm 19, verse 1 and 2 states, Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. The heavens and the earth themselves are a testament to God's power and God's majesty. This allows us to see that even through science, we can recognize and appreciate God's hand in creation. And second, I believe in the existence of God because I have experienced His presence in my life. Growing up as a preacher kid, attending church was uh, mandatory. Every Sunday morning and Wednesday evening, I was at church. Even though there were times I would rather have stayed home and to watch my favorite shows. At the time, I rarely thought about whether God really existed. But everything changed when I went to college. Away from home and living in a dormitory, I was confronted with the question, what do I believe? And does God really exist? This prompted me to seriously consider God's existence for the first time. To seek answers, I began attending worship services regularly and praying honestly. You know, in many Korean churches, there is a tradition of the early morning worship service, the starting at 5.30 a.m., after these services, there is a time set aside for personal prayer. I attended these services and asked God to show me if God exists. One day, as I walked home from the early morning worship service, I paused to observe the sky and tree. Their beauty unfolding before me. At the time, I felt a profound sense of God's presence that changed my heart. It felt as though God was affirming that He made everything, this world. This profound experience convinced me of God's reality. Choosing to follow Jesus has improved my life the significantly, my values, my word, my thought, and my actions began to change. I slowly became more interested in serving others rather than focusing on myself. Later, when I married, my faith made me a better husband. Furthermore, when we had children, my faith made me a better husband. Father. My faith has also led me to be more generous, more compassionate, enabling me to better understand, understand and care for others. I'm better father, better husband, and better friend because I try to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. My faith provides me with a purpose and meaning and direction in life. Moreover, my faith in Christ helps me to believe that the painful and difficult and challenging experiences in life do not get the final word. 
Instead, I believe that God can bring good from them. I am a profoundly different person than I would have been without God's grace. And then third, another reason why I believe in God's existence because I can see how faith impacts people. I have witnessed the profound effect of faith in God of love and grace on those who believe. I have seen lives radically transformed by accepting God's grace and dedicating themselves to Him. I have observed people freed from addictions, brokenness, and pain. I have seen people find peace, strength, and hope. I have watched individuals transition from self centered living to selfless lives dedicated to serve others. These three reasons convinced me to believe in the God's existence, the universe's majesty and beauty, and personal experience of God, and the impact of faith. I want to conclude my sermon with a story. Whenever I travel by airplane, I ask myself this question. How many people actually worry about the plane cra crash when they take a flight? Maybe some people are concerned about the risk. But most passengers don't think about the potential danger. Instead, most passengers place their trust in the pilot and the airplane. But we have never met a pilot. We don't know their abilities. We have not checked if the airplane has been maintained properly. We don't know if the weather conditions are safe enough to fly that day. Yet, most passengers trust the pilot and the airplane will safely transport them to their destination. My point is, if you can trust an airplane and a pilot whom you never met and never seen, how can you not trust in our greater God? Our God is greater than the pilot and the airplane. Therefore, we decide to follow Jesus, surrendering our lives to his guidance and care. Today, many people only believe what they see and what they touch and taste it. Until things are proven by science, they find it hard to believe. This mindset dominated, dominates our society making it challenging for Christians to maintain their faith. However, through the beauty of creation, the majesty of the universe, the transformation of people by faith, and our own experiences, we can believe in the existence of God. He is greater than anything we can imagine. He is a greater. We are in awe of his majesty, power, love, and grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, when we look up at the sky and the stars, we are overwhelmed by the, the beauty and the majesty of your amazing creation. Sometimes we find ourselves questioning our faith. In our moment of doubt, help us to be honest and courageous, bringing our uncertainties to you. Let these doubts not drive us from you, but draw us closer 
as we seek you. Lord, we ask for your wisdom to discern the truth. You have revealed it through both scripture and the natural world. Help us to embrace the beauty and complexity of your creation as a testament to your existence and love. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. As we continue to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. I invite you to um, offertory prayer, so please join me for offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, you created the sky, moon, stars, and all else. We believe that you are the creator of everything. We are thankful to you for all that you have done for us. As we offer these gifts to you today, we pray that they may be used to extend your kingdom of love, peace, and justice. Bless our offerings, O Lord, and multiply them as only you can. Teach us to give not just from our abundance, but from our heart, reflecting your generosity towards us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand and then we sing together hymn number 77, How Great the Art. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters, now as we depart from this place, may the God of all creation guide your steps through every doubt and strengthen your faith. May the loving God, our Heavenly Father, the Jesus Christ, our Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.